Earlier this week, we talked a little bit about Michael Burry, he of big short fame, lining up some bets against Kathy Wood's main ARK Innovation ETF, ARK-K. And, and of course, over the last year, we have spent a lot of time discussing, as we've termed it, the broader ARKiverse, all five of the ARK Invest uh, investment vehicles, the ETFs, which have become so popular among retail investors. Um, and, and that's the whole point of an ETF, right? You get in and out, you got daily liquidity, and you get exposure to, you know, Kathy Wood's investment ideas. And really, if there is uh, one strategist that I think encapsulates sort of this recent moment, this post-COVID moment of enthusiasm around technology and around growth stocks, it is, of course, Kathy Wood and her team at ARK Invest, famously coming out a couple years ago with a $4,000 price target on Tesla uh, on a split adjusted basis. Tesla got there. Now they have a $3,000 price target on Tesla, not split adjusted. So Tesla today trading what around six, $700 per share. So we're looking uh, at essentially a quadruple and, and then a little bit for Tesla shares over the next handful of years. And if you look at ARK's performance over the last five years, it has, of course, been incredible. This was the pre-COVID story around Kathy Wood is how well she had done relative to her peers. And now, guys, we continue to see more folks lining up uh, to critique the strategy, critique the thinking around some of you know ARK's boom. But I think in my opinion, some of the criticism around how ARK goes around finding their ideas and investing misses the mark of, of what the point is here and, and what Wood herself has discussed in interviews around setting up shop for ARK, which is that um, you know, she's there to attract assets for people who are like-minded and who believe you know, these big, long-term, secular growth stories, Julie, and not have to go through the classic portfolio manager, red tape, and, and right, it's, it's about gathering assets and, and, and oh, by the way, outperforming the market handily over the last several years. Yeah, it is not surprising, nor is it unusual in the long history of Wall Street than when someone is very successful. And yes, of course, she's come down this year. There's no mistake it, mistaking it. But when someone attracts a lot of assets, when someone is an outperformer, that other people come out swinging, right? So that is what seems to be happening increasingly here with Burry this week with a tweet storm that targeted Wood and mostly talked uh, about valuations. Although uh, to be perfectly honest, I did not read all 37 tweets or whatever it was in that tweet storm. Um, and as you pointed out this morning, Miles, um, you know maybe there's an aspect of, of sexism here when it comes to Wood. Um, I do think if there is that, there is also just the more common schadenfreude when someone is doing well. Although, again, the caveat that she is doing less well than she was earlier this year in terms of performance. But Wood has always been clear that she's a long, she's looking over the very long term, right? She's looking at, um, if not moonshots, certainly nearly moonshots with some of her bets in this market. So it's both sort of unsurprising uh, that we are seeing these kinds of uh, critiques of her at this point. And, you know, We'll just have to see. We're not going to see in the short term whether those folks are right or not. Yeah, and just looking at some of the how the performance has been for their top three holdings in the fund. You look at look at Tesla shares are down about two and a half percent year to date. Teladoc down thirty one percent year to date. Roku only up five percent. Of course, underperforming the S and P five hundred there. So it's not surprising to see the uh, Arc ETF uh, under pressure here and, and lagging. But again, Miles, I go back to I think some of the things you you were referencing here. Nothing has really changed for Kathy Wood. Uh, she has, I think, stayed true to her strategy, looking mm -hmm. 5, 10, 15, 20 years out. And if those companies are losing money today, at least in her view, that's OK, because for whatever reason, those companies might change the future, change the game of their sector or the country or the world a decade from now. Yeah, and and again, I think I think that the conversation, the criticisms of of Wood, let's say, are around the valuation of the businesses that are in her ETFs, and okay, there can be a disagreement on you know valuation methodology and methodology and you know what the stock is worth and so on and so forth. But basically, you what you what what you end up with is the oldest argument in financial markets, which isn't even an argument. It's just some people, you know, with their pencils and calculators saying, I'm right, you're wrong. And Kathy Wood being like, well, I disagree. 
And, and I think that there's going to be other star fund managers who come along in the future who are going to face similar types of criticisms because the way that that team goes around valuing opportunities and placing their bets is different and unconventional to say the very least relative to some more traditionally oriented um, value focused investors. And I think what ends up netting out in financial markets, which is why I think financial markets are so interesting, is that both people can be right, both people can make money, but when you start veering into this, well, I don't want to make money. I want to be, you know, I want to be intellectually soothed by the, the quality of my argument. That's when you end up kind of getting off track here, right? So I don't think we need to. Uh, I, I don't see a lot of value, I guess. Let's say in the sort of intellectual uh, ego contest with how someone puts together their portfolio versus how someone else does it, because both you can make money for your clients, both you can do very well. And I, I find, you know, the entire, um, you know, public criticism with a certain tone, I find it uh, unbecoming, let's say. And, and I don't really think necessary in the context of a market where uh, we're just simply trying to express our ideas. But I'll get off that soapbox and we'll pick that up a different time. All right, guys.